You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Hey everybody, and welcome to another interview show. This is Seth, your host, and I'm with Zach Seward, right? That's right. Of, of technically and technically Philly and technically Baltimore and technically technically everywhere. Technically everywhere, Brooklyn, D.C., and Delaware are the others. Wow, yeah, no, Del- Delaware. Del- Delaware got its own technically. Del- what? Yeah, we Del- just what? expanded there uh, this summer. So in June or July, we started doing content there. That's awesome. I, I went to the University of Delaware. I'm a graduate. Oh, um, I'm a blue hen. So. You're a blue hen, a UD blue hen. I'm a, I'm a blue chicken. Yeah, so much of uh, so much of the stuff that goes on in Delaware touches UD in some way, shape, or form. Delaware so is UD. It's a there's a lot of activity going on outside of like in Newark around UD. There's a lot of stuff happening. So exactly, we're, we're there to me. I, I like Newark. Yeah, it's, it's not Newark. It's Newark. Oh, you caught me. I tried to slip that through you, man. It, it took me for so long. Now I call it Newark, New Jersey, Newark. Yeah, that's after four years there, it kind of clicks. Yeah, I lived in New York for a minute, so Newark was my first sort of the the first. Well, you live in Newark, I, New Jersey. No, I lived in New York, New York for a bit. So okay. being approximate to Newark. Made me say Newark. Newark. Well, but it's really New York. Actually, technically, it is Newark if you if you really send it out. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Well, first off, let's. Um, we have a plea to our our listeners. If you want to support us, go to Patreon.com/PhillyTech.org. Any give us a monthly a dollar a month even anything that can help would be awesome because we're we're really bootstrapping this trying to get this off off. And running. We're also trying to raise five hundred dollars on Indiegogo. So far, we've someone, some nice guy has donated a dollar to our campaign. Ooh. So we we were at least in the p- positive now. So thank you. And he wanted to be anonymous, otherwise I would have thanked him verbally. Uh, but go to socl.bz/indiegogo to volunteer for that. And we want to thank our sponsors real fast. Aweber.com. Go to Philly. Go to aweber.com/phillytechorg. You'll see my smiling face. Um, they're great. You can get for the first month for one dollar. You get to try out their service for the first month. Well worth it. They're an awesome company. They're based in Philadelphia, which is awesome. Our other sponsor is Wistia, W-I-S-T-I-A dot com. They do our video hosting and they do business business video hosting and make it so that everything looks professional and you're not relying on YouTube for your business video. And lastly, our is Get Flywheel. They are our Host our web host. They are WordPress optimized hosting based out of Omaha, Nebraska. But they are, I mean, dude, it's fast. I mean, it went from night and day. I went from a, um, a VPS on a on a um, server that we will not mention um, to them. It was like night and day. It's like you click it, it's there. There's no hesitation whatsoever. So, anyhow, back to Zach. So Zach, what is technically or technical.ly? Yeah, we call it Technically. It started as Technically Philly, but Technically is a news and events organization. We serve entrepreneurs and technologists now in five markets. Uh, we do daily news coverage. We have marquee events over the course of the year. We also have smaller events along the way. We're basically trying to be sort of like the town square for any city's community of technologists and entrepreneurs. That's awesome. So, I mean, has anyone ever compared you to TechCrunch? You could say that, yeah. We often get like, oh, you're the tech crunch of Philly, or oh, the tech crunch of Baltimore. Less, yeah, we get that every once in a while. Less yeah, yeah I, I would hope so. I mean, we're, we're sort of more like, I guess, a little more do-goody. Like, we have we have sort of like a, a mission where we're trying to sort of accelerate these communities as we cover them. We, we cover them in a critical and, and honest fashion, but we're also sort of serving a purpose in the growth of these technology communities in you know cities that aren't necessarily known for their technology community. That's what I love about it. That's what we're trying to do as well. Yeah. And I love that. You, you guys, that's, I think the word is you're not trolling. You're not trolls. That's true. I feel, like, I, feel, I feel like TechCrunch is great. Don't get me wrong, but they troll a lot. That's true. That's true. We're not they can't trolling. do daily. They, they troll a lot. You know, Sarah Lee is a big troll. Uh, you could, she well she has the whole big Uber thing right she kicked off this whole massive debate about Uber oh she she's a troll but she's a good troll I mean she does she does good work but every once in a while it's like oh my god what are you doing 
<laughs> yeah, I don't quite get Pando daily, but they do some interesting work every now and then. Exactly, exactly. So what, what markets are you in? You're in Philly, so obviously in, Philly. Philly's, the, Philly's where we started uh, in about 20, 2009, 2010. Uh, then the next expansion market was Baltimore. After that came Brooklyn, then Delaware this summer, and then later this summer we just added D.C. So we're in five markets total, four cities, one state. One state. Oh, yeah, because Delaware just can't really yeah, have, well, you can't have technically Wilmington. It's kind of like... Uh, yeah, it broke the mold. We have to... We go... We go... We do the whole state. We do the whole first state. Well, well, well I guess the next one's Rhode Island, right? Yeah, technically uh, technically Rhode Island. We could do... Um, let's see. Well, what is the small? Altoona. We could do... Oh, Altoona. Altoona. But that's, that's back to the city model. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, I don't know. Is there a startup scene in Altoona? No, not that I know of. I'm sure there's something. The thing about all this stuff is that, like, this whole rise, in Omaha. rise of the rest idea, right? Omaha being a prime example of these cities that sort of are slowly awakening to the idea that you have to have an in-house community of technologists and entrepreneurs if you're going to thrive in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing about our model, and I don't think this is necessarily in the, in the works, but you could probably do this in any number of cities that aren't getting their fair share of coverage when it comes to technology and innovation. Yeah, and I love that. I love that it started in Philadelphia because I mean, Philly gets a bad rap because we're it's right below Boston and mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, then there's Philly, and Philly's a great city. And well, of course, we're biased because we're in Philadelphia. But um, and then then there's DC, mm -hmm. and you know, and Baltimore. But I feel like Baltimore and D like Baltimore is like this evil is like the stepchild of DC. It doesn't get enough credit. I feel mm -hmm. like Philly always gets the bad rap from New York. Mm -hmm. Do you I feel like that. I feel like it's more like um, so. New York is the big brother to which they all aspire. So it's so Philly looks up to New York in a way that's where Baltimore looks up to Philly. Similarly, I feel kind like, then, or, or I think Baltimore looks up to DC. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Baltimore and Philly have a lot of similarities, just in terms of sort of character. But this is definitely part of like the DC orbit a little bit. It's got its own thing going on for sure. But it's more. I love Boston too. Boston, Boston, they're they're. They're not scrappy one bit, but you know they're kind of under the radar. When you think of it, like when I think of Boston, I don't think startup scene. I think MIT. I guess I think startup scene, but more technology like MIT and Harvard. I mean, but like yeah, if you I mean if you look at some of the venture capital dollars, Boston and Cambridge are definitely a startup destination, especially around health innovation, health IT, mm -hmm. uh, biopharmaceuticals, biomedicine. A lot of the stuff that's coming out of both Harvard and MIT ends up getting a lot of startup dollars. So I think the thing about a place like Philly or a place like Baltimore even is what is that it's sort of sandwiched between these bigger markets, um, where it has to sort of fight to hold its own. We're scrappy. We're scrappy, right? Like that fits so in. It's always been scrappy, though. Ethos. Yeah, that's right. That's it's it's part of the package. Yeah. So where do you, so where are you from originally? I'm from San Francisco originally, so I grew up in California. Oh, you're 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 a Silicon Valley guy. You're a Bay Area guy. Sort of. I like to think of my San Francisco as being like when it was charmingly weird and not like overly, oh. um, overly um, pretentious. Yeah, pretentious, precious. It's just every time I go back, it's a little bit too much for me. So. Oh, so you so you're, you're you're you adopted Philadelphia. I think so. Yeah, I've sort of been like just going eastward since I turned 18. So. When I went to college, I went to Chicago, and then I just kept rolling east. So I worked in D.C. for a bit, went back to school in New York City, was in upstate New York and Rochester. Wow. Um, but, hey, Rochester, you can't knock Rochester. They have their no, own. I love Rochester. Rochester. I'm a big Rochester fan. So, yeah. I'm a big it's Rochester cold. Fan. I mean, they're getting slammed right now with the snow. Yeah, apparently Buffalo is really taking the brunt of it. But, yeah, Rochester, I have a, uh, a soft spot for Rochester. Yeah, New York. What, what do you think about the whole New York startup New York campaign? It's interesting. I mean, New York City is gaining a lot of momentum in the startup world in a relatively short time span, right? Like you have it's Silicon Valley. Years. Yeah, it's like there's all this attention that's being paid to New York as a startup city. And I think um, I think the government in New York tends to be a little bit more activist in um, getting dollars out there to start this stuff up, relative to Pennsylvania, that is. Um, and I think there's just, you have the benefit of being in sort of the cultural capital of the United States, right? You have all these uh, media organizations, you have all these uh, funders, you have a lot of things going in New York that um, are those key elements for making a strong startup scene. Yeah, I, I always, oh, and you also had that billionaire, they also had a billionaire mayor, you know, who ran a TV station, so I mean, and, you know. Mr. Bloomberg, yeah, Mr. indeed. Bloomberg. 
Yeah, he, I mean, it's interesting because they, um, the, they sort of attracted Cornell to establish a campus. I think it's on, I forget the island. I think it's like... Oh, Roosevelt, Island. Roosevelt. Roosevelt Island. One of the islands is going to become like uh, sort of a, a tech destination. So, I mean, we're in New York. We cover Brooklyn. We just cover Brooklyn. If it's a Manhattan thing, we don't touch it. Um, well, because I, I feel like Brooklyn is its own beast. I mean, yeah, it's New York, but Brooklyn itself is, is scrappy. Yeah, I mean, totally. But Brooklyn, is, I mean... Everyone thinks New York. They think Manhattan, mm -hmm. and yeah, I feel yeah. like and I, and and there's a, and I, trust me, I like Manhattan. I'm mm -hmm. you know I'm a Philadelphia guy, but like I feel like Brooklyn's also very like Philadelphia. They got the neighborhoods, they're a little rough and tumble. Mm -hmm. You get the Russians over there. You get you know mm -hmm. blacks over here. It, it's very ethnic, you know, and you got all the great food and. But it, it, honestly, isn't it, wouldn't it have been like the fifth biggest city if it was its own city? Yeah, I think when the two merged, they were the nations. Uh, first and second largest city. So Brooklyn is a very large place. But I, I, I do think that Brooklyn is starting to come into its own. When you, mm -hmm. when you think about New York, you're, you're increasingly starting to think about Brooklyn. We cover Brooklyn startups there, and they definitely have a more creative flair. Um, they often sort of incorporate arts and design, mm -hmm. um, 3D printing and additive manuf manufacturing. Are very oh, maker, is a MakerBot over there? Yeah, MakerBot yeah, is over there. there. Yeah, MakerBot is there. Um, Solidoodle is over there. Um, there's a number of 3D printing companies who are doing interesting things in Brooklyn. And you know what it is? I think also the rent's lower. Yeah, relatively speaking, right? <laughs> well, not, maybe not Williamsburg per se, but like if you, the farther east you go, yeah. the farther away from New York mm -hmm. City, I feel like you can actually, I mean, because I feel like a lot of the start, I have a lot of friends in the New York startup scene, and a lot of them live in Brooklyn because they can actually afford it. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's real estate is a big defining factor over there. Like we did a big piece about sort of like the real estate stock in Brooklyn kind of being out of step with a lot of demands of like tech startups. But it's always interesting to see how that colors the story there, right? Because it's it's always the next neighborhood. It's oh, Gowanus is the next Williamsburg. Or, or oh God, really? Away. Yeah, Gowanus is actually coming up. Um, Genius. Even with the even with the super fun site. Even with the canal, a lot of interesting things are happening in Gowanus. Genius, which was formerly Rap Genius, they're about to move there. There's a number of actually interesting startups in Gowanus. So keep. Just don't drink the water. Don't drink the. Don't go swimming. Oh God! Will you grow a third arm in that thing? That's. I guess that's the rumor. But you know, whatever. But I knock it. I knock that. it. I okay. knock it. But Doylestown has a super fun site. Yeah, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of super fun sites around. I it it's um well, we weren't on Law and Order SVU though. I mean that's what got them. I mean that's what I found out about it. You know, it was that Doylestown was, dumped, was Doylestown was on Law and Order. No, 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 no. We weren't. Oh god, uh, the, the Guanas was. Guanas was. So it was enough. dumped in there, and they found a body in the Guanas Canal. See, that would have been news if Doylestown was on Law and Order. Like Law and Order Doylestown would have been pretty tight. <laughs> Law and Order Doylestown. <laughs> god. Actually, we're already in the news for things we don't want to be in the news for. So. But even Doylestown. I mean, this should be a technically Doylestown. Yeah, that'd be something. I don't know. It's part of the mega, it's part of the region, right? Like, I think yeah, there's you a lot guys of, cover it up here. I mean, you guys we do. We, tr we try to get out there as much as we can. I think we're definitely um, we're definitely like sort of city focused. We try to get as much of the region as we can. Um, I think there's. Yeah, I, I did a rant on that on my other show. I did a rant <laughs> on how everyone's fully centric and how it's really the greater Philadelphia area, guys. Yeah. Did you rant on us, man? Did you just no, rant? I didn't rant on you guys. I ran it on um, some other people. But I was like, you know, I, and I was talking to your your um your boss, your boss. Uh, yeah, he's, I guess you could call him my boss. He's my founder, Chris Wink. Yeah, Chris Wink. I was talking to him about it, and he's like, we gotta get up there more often. I mean, we got Brick Simple up here and De Anson, and, and he's got multiple locations across the country. And he's he's kind of like our chief nerd. Chief nerd. I was I was watching um you know Gabriel Weinberg of uh, yeah. of DuckDuckGo. I was watching him on Twitter get into it with someone about whether or not Paoli counts as the Philly startup scene. I'm a strong believer that it does count as the Philly startup scene. I think the five county region. I think yeah, I would absolutely. say Lancaster isn't. Absolutely. You, you don't you don't want to be excluding companies like Duck DuckGo from that yeah, broader think, narrative about tech in Philadelphia. You don't you I don't want to be making it a smaller tent. You want it to be a bigger tent. I'd even hazard to say it's Lehigh County. And then that's pushing it. The Lehigh County, Lehigh. Bucks that's County. That's a stretch, man. Lehigh County, though. I mean, like Allen, up to Allentown, because that's kind of a, yeah. maybe that, or that's a whole other area there. But Bucks County, Monco, mm -hmm. Chester County, Delco, mm -hmm. and Philadelphia. And, and maybe, I mean, maybe Burks. Maybe Burks a little bit. I mean, historically, with like the Route 202 corridor, so much innovation in Philadelphia has been going on in those counties around uh, the life sciences, around pharmacy. Oh, yeah, pharma capital of the world. 
Big time. So to 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 write out sort of write out a Route 202 from the history of Philadelphia Tech and innovation is a is a silly move. You mean that in 611. Yeah, in 611. Yeah, true. And 95. Nine, not so like not. Camera on me. Nine, not, 95 going up the up the up the coast of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Up the, up the, up the coast. Up the coast of Pennsylvania. Up the, up the Delaware. Hey man. I got into Bucks County that way. Then 611 going you know through Horsham. Horsham's a big tech area. Mm-hmm. Up into Doylestown, and then you have 202 going out west. Yeah. So and three and 309 too. 309 is a big corridor too. Yeah, Fort Washington and stuff like that. There's a lot of activity in that area too. It's interesting because it's such a big region. It's just so hard to. Um, Cover. I mean, as a news organization with limited resources, mm-hmm. getting to all these places is difficult. So, you know, it's interesting to. Uh, I, I'm following you guys to see what you are able to do in terms of adding to that conversation. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying to figure something out over here. You know, you know, we're we're, we're even finding that we're getting more Philly centric than we want to be. But you mm-hmm. know, you can't ignore Philadelphia. I mean, it's the hub of this of the wheel. Yeah, it yeah. branches out from Philadelphia, in my opinion, because yeah. we're all Philadelphians. But it's just this pulls out. So, so. The, and, I mean, and that's the big trend, right? That's the generational trend, right? Urbanism and millennials getting more and more excited about um, revitalizing these East Coast cities. That you know, two three decades ago, their fortunes weren't looking so hot. But oh yeah, they were. Here in Philadelphia, I mean, um, you know, population is trending upward. There's a Thank lot of God. young, creative, talented people who are. Um, throwing down roots in Philadelphia and trying to make it work here. So it's 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 interesting to be here and watch that. It's also interesting to sit in Philadelphia and watch our four other markets as they um, each establish their own distinct flavor for how they do startups. So here's a question for you. Sure. Do you think Philadelphia, I mean, because the whole wage tax thing, I know the reason why I stayed out of Philadelphia was because of the wage tax. Mm-hmm. And if you work in the city, I think you get double wage tax. Mm-hmm. You look at startup in NY, NY, which is a whole state, Going like tax free for startups for the first five years. Mm-hmm. You think Philadelphia should do something like that, or Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and everything in between? Like the state should do, you know, startup PA. Yeah, I was talking to someone in City Hall actually about an idea like this, sort of doing like a duty free zone for startups in a particular part of the city. There's one initiative in DC that's worth mentioning. I think it's called the DC DC Digital Fund. I'm, I think I'm botching that, but there's a there's a program in DC where they sort of delineated this corridor. And you can get grants uh, and funding if you're a startup to situate in this corridor for at least three years. So they're trying to do that on um, a, a really targeted level. And I think that's something that a city like Philadelphia should definitely be considering. Especially as it the looks, wage tax really hits people. Up. Yeah, you ta- I mean, yeah, it does. Especially in sort of like a creative economy when you're talking about the business privilege tax, if you're not necessarily associated with the business, there's there are those... Um, those policy things that have implications. You know, you talk to you talk to startup founders, and that's a thing. The thing that I was curious about was like, what did Concha Hawken do to like lure all those companies there over the last? Seriously, years? it's Concha Hawken. Yeah, exactly. Like, follow the Concha Hawken playbook. See what you can steal from Montgomery County when it comes to luring tech companies to build uh, big shiny buildings along the Schuylkill up there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Concha Hawkins one of those. I mean, everyone's kind of building out their own stuff up here, but Concha Hawkins like the, the, a jewel. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's um yeah, I, I think that's a history story that might be worth telling on Technically Philly sometime soon. Absolutely, absolutely. So where can people find you online? Uh you can find me online, let's see, you can find me on Twitter. Uh I'm at Zach Seward, so it's Z A C K S E W A R D. Uh I am my my fingerprints are all over our five websites, day in, day out. You can find me Technically Philly, Technically Brooklyn, Technically Baltimore, Technically Delaware, Technically D C I don't know. Where else? I don't, I don't know. Come find me. I'm around. You're around, he's, and he's accessible, which is very nice. Um, any other technically is coming out that you can spill the beans on? Uh, I got no beans to be spilled right now. I got nothing for you. I'm just trying to keep five going. I hear you, my friend. I hear you. So check out technically, T-E-C, I can't spell it, technically dot, it's technical dot L-Y. That's the way to do it. I usually say it's technically with a dot between the two L's. So technically That's exactly how to do it. Perfect, perfect. perfect. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on the show, and we'll, you know, we'll get it out and we'll broadcast it all over the place. Awesome. Thanks so much, Seth. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. See you, man.